This series of short videos brought to you by the Energy Saving Trust will explain the basics about electric vehicles, their benefits and how to drive them more efficiently. My name's Robert Llewellyn and I've been driving electric cars for the last five years. I've driven over 150,000 miles in them, so I know that they work very well. But one common concern is the perceived complications of charging them. I mean, at the present time, most people who've got electric cars have somewhere off the street to charge them. But then how long is it going to take? Well, there's one or two important things to remember. It's not commonly understood by drivers that for 90% of the time, your car is idle. In fact, at any one moment on Earth, 90% of all cars are idle, just parked up and waiting to be used. So the fact that it can take a few hours to charge your car from a socket like this really isn't an issue. It does it while you sleep. A good way to distinguish between charge times is to think about how many miles of range a different supply will give you per hour. A socket like this one, with a 16 or 32 amp feed, or 5 to 7 kilowatts, will add between 15 and 30 miles range in an hour. So, if your car has a range of 150 miles and it's very nearly empty when you arrive home, a socket like this will take about 6 hours to reach 100%. 6 hours while you're sleeping. If you have a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, the battery is much smaller and won't take much time to charge, just an hour or two. If you have a variable rate electricity supply, you can charge your car after midnight and make even more savings on your fuel bill. Another important thing to remember is that every morning when you get in your car, the tank is full. Now, there's no more dashing by the filling station first thing in the morning and standing in the cold. But more importantly, many electric cars have features like preheating or cooling, which you can either set up in the car on a timer or you can turn on remotely using an app on your phone. Now, if the car is preheated while it's plugged in, the range won't be affected. Now, in the winter, the windows will be frost free and the interior will be toasty warm from the get go. Now, there are government grants available to help you pay for having one of these charge points fitted at your home. They have to be fitted by a qualified electrician, of course, but they don't need to be inside the garage. They can be fitted on the outside of the wall and they're very, very safe to use. So that's charging your car at home. But what if you've got nowhere off the street to park the car? There are more and more solutions for on-street charging appearing all the time. If you only have access to on-street parking, you can approach your local council and suggest they fit one of these they can apply for a grant assistance from the Office of Low Emission Vehicles. The number of on-street charging points is rapidly increasing. In Greater London, for instance, there are already thousands of publicly accessible on-street chargers, not counting the many in car parks and supermarkets. This is a new system that's just been introduced, which expands the possibilities to an enormous degree. Street lamps already have an electric connection. This special cable can access any one of them fitted with this socket. The box on the cable communicates with a central system which records the cost of each charge. All you have to do is plug it in and the system works it out for you. So when you travel longer distances, you can make use of rapid chargers like these. At a glance, these contraptions can look a bit complicated, but they're genuinely not that hard to use. There are three different connectors that you can use to get a rapid charge in your car. And in order to access these chargers, you need either a card, a membership card, or a smartphone app. Now, the cost of using them is between three and six pounds for a charge. Most electric cars now have charge points embedded into their sat-navs, which makes planning a longer journey even easier. Now there's lots of web pages and smartphone apps that show you where all the publicly available chargers are. So one really important thing to remember is if you can charge your car either at home or at work, then that is where you'll charge it for 90% of the time. Now I do use the public charging network, but after seven years of driving electric cars all over the country, I use it far less than I imagined. Of course, the more charge points there are, the easier it will be. Places like hotels and restaurants, uh, supermarket car parks, multi-storey car parks are all fitting electric car charging points because they know it brings new customers to their business. After a while, you discover that charging your car is not as complicated as it might first seem. I'm not terribly clever and I manage.